Have you ever looked at a map of the world and wondered why Greenland looks bigger than South America, even though in reality it's only about one-eighth the size? That's because of the Mercator effect, a distortion caused by the way the world is projected onto a flat surface. It's a fascinating phenomenon with far-reaching consequences that are still felt today. Today, the Mercator projection is still widely used in classrooms, boardrooms, and even on your smartphone. But its impact goes beyond just geography. It can shape our perceptions of different countries and continents, perpetuate certain biases, and reinforce stereotypes. Welcome to the Isle of Knowledge. In this video, we'll explore the history and science of the Mercator effect, its real-world consequences, and some alternative map projections that offer a more accurate picture of the world. So grab a seat and buckle up. It's time to take a journey through the distorted world of the Mercator projection. Okay, so we know that the Mercator projection distorts the size and shape of countries and continents. But how exactly does it work? Well, the Mercator projection is what's known as a cylindrical projection. That means it takes the globe and wraps it around a cylinder, with the equator as the center line. The resulting map is then flattened out, which creates the distortion. The problem is that the Earth is a sphere, not a cylinder, so when you try to flatten it out, you end up with all kinds of weird and wonky shapes. The distortion is most pronounced in areas that are far from the equator, such as Greenland or Antarctica. To give you an idea of how extreme the distortion can be, let's look at some examples. On a Mercator projection, Greenland looks absolutely massive, almost as big as Africa. In reality, it's actually about 14 times smaller. Meanwhile, Africa looks much smaller than it really is, as do other countries near the equator, like Brazil or Indonesia. This distortion can have some serious consequences. For one thing, it can make certain countries or regions appear less important or significant than they really are. It can also perpetuate certain biases or stereotypes, like the idea that Europe or North America are much larger or more important than they actually are. So now that we know how the Mercator projection works and what it does, let's dive deeper into the real-world consequences of this distortion. You might be wondering, if the Mercator projection is so distorted, why do we still use it? That's a great question, and the answer is actually quite complex. For one thing, the Mercator projection has a long and fascinating history. When it was first developed by Gerardus Mercator in the 16th century, it revolutionized the way we saw the world. It allowed sailors to navigate the oceans more accurately by creating a straight line between two points on the map that represented the shortest distance between them. This made it easier to plot a course and avoid dangerous obstacles like reefs or icebergs. But the Mercator projection also had cultural significance. It was created during a time when European powers were exploring and colonizing other parts of the world, and it reinforced the idea of Europe as the center of the world. The projection made European countries appear much larger and more important than they really were while downplaying the size and significance of other regions like Africa or South America. Today, the Mercator projection is still widely used in many different contexts. It's the default projection on many online mapping platforms, like Google Maps or Bing Maps, it's also used in classrooms and boardrooms around the world, where it's often seen as the most familiar and recognizable projection. But there are other practical reasons why the Mercator projection is still used as well. For one thing, it's a conformal projection, which means that it preserves angles and shapes of small areas. This makes it useful for certain types of navigation and map making, particularly for charts used by pilots or sailors. So while the Mercator projection is certainly flawed, it's also deeply embedded in our cultural and practical traditions. But as we'll see, there are other projections that offer a more accurate representation of the world, ones that can help us better understand our planet and the people who live on it.
Now that we've explored the ins and outs of the Mercator projection, it's time to talk about the real-world consequences of the Mercator effect. First and foremost, the Mercator projection can perpetuate certain biases and misunderstandings about the world. By making certain countries and regions appear larger or more important than they really are, it can reinforce stereotypes and misconceptions. For example, many people assume that Europe and North America are much larger and more significant than they actually are, while countries in Africa or South America may be seen as smaller or less important. But the Mercator effect can also have more insidious effects. By distorting the size and shape of certain regions, it can perpetuate historical injustices and power imbalances. For example, in the context of colonialism and imperialism, the Mercator projection helped to legitimize the idea of European dominance over other parts of the world. This distortion can also affect how we understand issues like climate change or global inequality. When we see a map that exaggerates the size of certain countries or downplays the significance of others, it can be hard to grasp the full scope and complexity of these issues. But it's not just about perception. The Mercator effect can also have very real impacts on people's lives. For example, it can affect how aid is distributed or how resources are allocated. In some cases, it can even contribute to conflicts or misunderstandings between different groups. Fortunately, there are alternatives to the Mercator projection that have been developed over the years to address the problems caused by the Mercator effect. Let's take a look at some of these alternative map projections. One such projection is the Peters projection, which was created by German historian Arno Peters in the 1970s. The Peters projection is an equal area projection, which means that it accurately represents the relative size of different countries and continents. This is achieved by distorting the shape of land masses so that they may look elongated or squished in some areas, but the relative sizes are maintained. Another alternative projection is the Gall-Peters projection, which is similar to the Peters projection but with a slightly different configuration of the continents. Like the Peters projection, the Gall-Peters projection is an equal area projection, which means that it provides a more accurate representation of the world. Both the Peters and Gall-Peters projections are examples of cylindrical equal area projections, which means that the cylindrical surface is used as the basis for the projection. In this type of projection, the meridians and parallels are straight and perpendicular, which helps to create a more uniform and consistent map. There are also other types of projections, such as the Robinson projection or the Winkle triple projection, that try to balance both size and shape distortions in different ways. These projections might not be as accurate as the equal area projections, but they still offer a more faithful representation of the world than the Mercator projection. Of course, no projection is perfect, and each has its own set of strengths and weaknesses. But by understanding the limitations of the Mercator projection and exploring alternative projections, we can gain a more nuanced and accurate understanding of the world we live in. By embracing these alternative projections, we can move towards a more equitable and just society where all countries and regions are seen as equally important and worthy of consideration. Now that we've explored the Mercator effect and its impact on our perception of the world, it's clear that the maps we use can have a profound effect on how we see and understand the planet we live on. From perpetuating biases and stereotypes to distorting the relative size of different countries and continents, the Mercator projection has a long and complicated history that continues to shape the way we see the world today. If you're interested in learning more about the Mercator effect and alternative map projections, be sure to check out the description below. We've included some resources to help you dive deeper into this fascinating topic, from articles and books to interactive maps and online tools. So what do you think? 
Do you feel like you have a better understanding of the Mercator effect and its impact on the world? Are there any other topics related to cartography or geography that you'd like to explore further? Let us know in the comments below and keep the conversation going. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing, which means a lot to me. I love to see your thoughts in the comment section.